Hey everybody, it is Mackenzie back for another video. Um, I know the cold is starting to come upon us. Leaves are falling, all things falls going on, football's back. All the good things about this new season. But the most important thing we need to be aware of is the cold. Cold is coming, snow is coming. It's gonna be a hopefully a easy winter, but there's still some things we need to be aware of as in the workplace, such as cold stress. I want to adjust these things now before it does get too cold and before ha things happen in the workplace that can affect our employees. So thinking of some main factors of cold stress are artificially or naturally cooled environments, wind, which pulls heat away from our body, wet clothing from sweat or even water, cold water immersion, which cools the body 20 time, 25 times faster than cold air, fatigue, which makes it harder for our body to create heat. Cold stress obviously can lead to hypothermia. It's a gradual process that can happen slowly. And workers may not even realize they're in danger before it's too late. Obviously, feeling cold is a first warning sign. Um, and if they feel cold, that means their body is obviously losing heat faster than their body is making it. So some key warning signs I wanted to address for hypothermia are shivering, grogginess, poor judgment, confused thinking, violent shivering, inability to think or pay attention, slow, shallow breathing, slurred speech, poor body coordination, loss of consciousness, little or no breathing, weak or irregular non-existent pulse. Now, as it being in the workplace and as leaders, how can we prevent this happening to our employees? Here are some ideas. Elimination or substitution. Can work be done in a different environment? Can a process be done that generates less cold or water? Um, engineering controls. Can heated warming shelters be placed on site? Can machines and tools be designed so that we don't ever have to take off mittens or gloves? Administration controls. Has an exposure plan been developed? Can warning signs be posted in the work area? Can work rotation be used to decrease cold exposure? Can signs explaining exposure symptoms be posted? Can written safe work procedures be posted? Can work be paced differently so that workers don't have to exert themselves to the point of heavy sweating? Have workers received education and training to increase their awareness of signs of cold, cold stress? And finally, and most importantly, PPE. Can personal battery-operated heaters or chemical heating pads under clothing be used? Do workers have proper protective clothing? They need, do they need a warm head covering, layer clothing? Do they also may, need to make sure that their hands and feet are always dry? Has PPE been tested to make sure that it's always working properly? So I know that was a lot of ideas and a lot of different things going on, but either way, make sure your employees stay warm. Make sure you try to avoid hypothermia. Avoid cold water with severe weather coming, and the snow is going to be falling here pretty soon. So I just wanted to address that for the week. Um, I hope everyone has a great week. Stay out of the cold, and I'll see you next week.